So hi everyone. Uh, make sure I don't trip over the actual electrical wires. So I guess you're all here to wonder about you know, what is creative coding with Apple devices. So I'm actually a PhD student from the University of Sydney. Uh, what I'm about to talk about isn't actually related to my PhD at all. It's sort of just self-interest. Uh, and it came up sort of because six months ago, uh, I was asked by the faculty of architecture, could I teach an information visualization course in design? You'll probably notice as the slides go through that I'm not a designer. And I'm from the faculty of IT. So the lecturer asked, you're doing all this stuff for you know, really large multi-touch tables. Can you sort of teach this for us? However, can you teach it on the table, but can you also teach it on the phone? And I was like, sure, why not? I had heard about open frameworks, and I thought, can't be that hard. I already know C++. So I got about to looking at it. So why might you want to use open frameworks as opposed to, say, Objective-C? Well, firstly, if you already know C++, you don't have to learn another language. Uh, you want to make something quick. And you tend to want to use it for sort of visualizations. So what does this actually sort of all mean? Well, there's a couple of sort of frameworks out there that are free. And they're targeted for sort of different audiences. So the three that I'm particularly familiar with are processing, open frameworks, and Cinder. Obviously, I'm going to be focusing on open frameworks for the next you know, 45 minutes or so. Processing is generally built for, I guess, the competitor crowd, Java and Android. Open Frameworks runs on pretty much anything that you can find. So it, it runs for Mac, it runs for Linux, it runs for Windows, it runs on a bunch of different phones, and their sort of thought is you write it once, you copy and paste it into the, a slightly different environment, and it should just run, because they provide all the wrappers for you, and they provide you a lot of examples. So the idea is you look at their examples. They actually say on their wiki, don't bother writing from scratch. Take our empty example, copy it, and just start editing that. So, so yeah, in terms of difficulty roadmap, processing is sort of like you know nothing. So you, you sort of say, you know, draw red, and it'll do it for you. You don't have to care. Open fr Frameworks is pretty much the same, it's, but it's, it's the C++ analog, so, and it doesn't give you a pretty sandbox. However, it gives you lots of free examples, which sort of make life easier. And then there's Cinder, which that sort of came out of Open Frameworks maybe two years ago. So Open Frameworks was really, really popular in 2009, and it's been used for many applications, particularly art installations. And then a few people thought, it's, uh, it's hiding a lot of the details. Can we expose it? So a few guys branched off, and they decided to, to build Cinder. And true to the name, an add-on for Cinder is called a Cinder block. So you can, you can imagine it's sort of like, you know, pushing something outside of yourself. That's how painful it sort of starts to get. But uh, the last two, they port to the iPhone uh, directly. And yeah, yeah. So beneath the surface, I guess, what do we have in Open Frameworks that makes everything run? So basically, yeah. The program starts there. This is an old picture. This is actually from 2009. So if you're running it not on a Mac, then this is correct. If you're running on a Mac, .cpp would just be changed with .mm. For a very long time, they didn't want to do that. And they had some really twisted workarounds. Eventually, they were like, let's just make a symbol for everyone. So yeah, basically, all of your codes generally just goes into main and extends a test app, which you never have to look at. And then it gives you a bunch of extra libraries. So it gives you a graphics library, an image library, a font library, a video player, texture library, sound, uh, serial. So you know, if you like playing around with Arduinos and you want to actually sort of connect this stuff up to robots and control them. 
Um, yeah, sometimes it's cool that if you know anyone that has one of those vacuum cleaner robots, to rewire that and just have that robot do something as opposed to vacuuming, it'll just, it's fun and it also confuses them. So, you know, you win twice. And then, yeah, sort of all the base libraries that it's based off. So, currently the version that I downloaded is 007. Uh, prior to 007, this is sort of why I said the magic after 005 was, in 005, they sort of, instead of having two pictures, they sort of just had one cluster of a picture, and it was really, really confusing to try and figure out how an actual application could get onto a phone. After 005, they did a big thing. They ripped out the dependency on GLUT, on the uh, actual windowing system, and they made that independent. And then this allowed them to sort of stitch a bunch of uh, iPhone-specific windowing toolkits in, and it's pretty much all the same now. It's, it's really easy. So, yeah, I guess just coming back to it, we don't really need to care about those two slides. You can if you want, but I look at them and like, oh, needlessly complex. I don't want to look at those. I just want to click on something and see it do something. So I really just want to click and run. So some of the primitives that we get for free in open frameworks is they give you, you know, an easy ability to draw a circle, a line, a point, a rectangle, triangle, and so on. And all a program really consists uh, these three things. Setup, which is called once. Then there's a draw and update loop, which is just called, well, it's called until either your battery dies or the thing crashes. It, it, it just keeps spinning. It's, there's nothing complex about it. Just draw, update, draw, update, draw, update. Uh, you can sort of maybe try and force it to go over, you know, maybe once a second or, no, maybe, no, once a second wouldn't be good. Maybe 60 times a second would be a nice frame rate. And then there's listeners. So they give you, you know, touch down, touch up, and so on. But I've been talking for a while, so let's check out an example. I don't think... Oh, yeah. So, yeah, with Open Frameworks, you just go to their website, openframeworks.cc. You download the package. Don't download it now because it's 700 megabytes. But when you get home, download it. And they give you all this stuff for free. So basically, yeah, it's a, it's a pre-release. So, <laughs> hell, they're not even alpha. <laughs> so uh, use it as, at your own risk, basically. So the package structure is sort of add-ons, uh, applications, and libraries. So as I said, you know, it uses a bunch of libraries, so Cairo for, for drawing f free image, for loading images, and so on. And in the applications, it gives you a bunch of basically things for free. So the one I particularly want to look at is a drawing one. Of course, the question is, where did I put it? You see, maybe it's this one. Um, I have a feeling. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and you also want to make sure that you run it with Xcode 4.1, not 4.2. I don't know, 4.2 just seems to be a little glitchy with um, open frameworks. Okay. Wow, this screen's huge. There we go. Okay, so uh, I guess just quickly before I run it. So in the setup, runs once. You basically, you register the, the touch listener. You can optionally register the accelerometer. Uh, phone alerts. I haven't used this, cause it, but um, I'm guessing it would come up if you know low on battery or you're getting a call. And I just set the background to gray. And then 
in the in the draw loop, I've got oh, what have I got? Oh, before I get to the draw loop, the listeners. So it gives me for free. Oh, can everyone see that? I didn't I didn't check because it's huge on my screen, but I just realized it might be a little tiny there. It's fine, okay. So you got touch down, touch move, touch up, double tap, lost focus, got memory warning, device orientation changed, and touch cancelled. So in the header file, again, all this stuff's for free. I basically, well, it even says empty example. You, you can see that I just took the empty example and I modified it. I add in the line vector OF point points. So basically what I want to do is every time I touch uh, the actual device, I want it to just record that point coordinate. So if I come back to test app, I'll see that, yeah, in touch moved, make myself a point, copy it over, and push it back. And just for a little bit of debugging, I've just got that there, which I can see down here later on. So if I run this, let's see what it actually does. Um, Yeah, let's see what it does. So uh, as always, just have to sort of wait for it to compile. The actual f open frameworks, this is a relatively old Mac, say 2009. Takes maybe about 45 seconds for me to compile. But then once you've compiled that for the first time, pretty much all of your examples compile within like 10 seconds. So it's just taking a while because it's compiling all the actual source files. So while it's compiling, why do people want to go to why do why do people why are people interested in creative coding? What are people's backgrounds? Because we're just gonna wait for this for like 30 seconds to compile. There's no point in just staring at me, let's have a conversation. Hey everyone, come on, don't what's your background? Has anyone used, say, processing before? Hey, we got a few. Open frameworks? Hey, you guys can notice if I'm screwing up. Um, yeah, I would say open frameworks is simpler than Cinder to get into. Uh, processing is even simpler, but it doesn't have a port for the iPhone. So if you want to stay strict to the iPhone, I'd go with open frameworks. Uh, in terms of learnability, you don't really need to know C++ because you can just look at their examples and sort of just adapt. Yeah, uh, You'll notice in the later demos, that's what I've done. It's taking a lot longer to compile than I remember when I was sitting down. Yeah. I, I, guess, I guess time goes when you're having fun. You know, you're sitting coding. Yeah. Hey, it's, there we go. And then we'll find out if this does what I think it does or if I'm in the wrong file. Yeah, come on. Okay, good. Succeeded. Wow, that is a huge phone. All right, no phones connected. Yeah. So, so yeah, on my later demo, we'll, um, yeah, it doesn't really have multi, yeah, but get the idea. See, all I had to do was, every time I, I, I have a point, Record it, and then now I'm just going, draw, 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 draw. This is not exactly the best use of you know, battery life in a phone if you were running this, but hey, you create something quick, funky, and what? It took me, let's ignore compile time. It took me what? Less than maybe a minute or something? Yeah, yeah. So uh, on the update, I've got a little random factor which basically takes the point and moves it. So you know, it sort of jiggles around. So that's, um, where is that? That's here. So yeah, they give you these three things like, you know, off random, create me a random point between you know, these two numbers. And that's, yeah, so then that did not take 
too long at all. Okay, so time for some actual code. This is the fun part because it's, it's live coding and I, I find it if I really do remember the stuff that I built. So let's have a sound example. You know, Lawrence, this morning I realized that, hey, I need to quickly get to these files. So I put an alias there and I called it other because I'm not going to forget what that's you know, ever, ever for. Ooh. Something's wrong. OK, no, that's still working. I seem to have lost the ability to click with the mouse of the trackpad. Yeah, that's something actually I noticed um, only this morning, really. Um, I noticed, yeah, <laughs> that uh, I'm sure it's got nothing to do with the actual framework. Must be something to do with my Mac. Uh, every so often, my, uh, my keyboard becomes unresponsive, which is bad. Wait, no. Yeah, this morning, the keyboard became unresponsive on Keynote. However, I typed a bunch of stuff here, and it came back to life. But now I'm wondering. How do you make that work for a mouse? Like if the mouse click doesn't work. Oh. Have you claimed it? Yeah, see, that's the thing. Uh, two weeks ago, I uh, formatted this. So it's, it's, it's basically got nothing on it. <laughs> oh, OK. It's, it's back. Good. OK, so a sound example. So, so this is the one that they give you for free. And yeah, what I left out as part of the title is this session is going to be slightly interactive, or at least it's going to hopefully become interactive. So uh, raise your hand if you have a functioning iPad, iPod Touch, or iPhone. Am I missing anything? Yeah, in the audience. OK. Make sure you're all connected to the wireless network. It's not for this example. It'll be one for later on. But still, make sure you're connected to the network. I'll also find that um, whether flooding the network is a good thing. I'm sure nobody was. OK. So I run this. And th this is their example. I haven't changed anything yet. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure. However, some of the messages I noticed this morning said is 2 is crashing. So I'm guessing 1.1. 1 .1. But uh, that's purely a guess. I don't know. Hey, you two would know. I don't. Okay. So, so this is the uh, sound example. So it's, you know, it's just registering to the, the internal microphone. I'll be quiet for a sec. See how much noise you can make so I can see what the graph does. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. <laughs> Feel free to scream and possibly annoy the person next door. You know, like if you whistle, you can go <sighs> Yeah, see, I can't whistle. Can anyone whistle? Can someone come up here and whistle? Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's working well. Now, this example, I mean, what, what are your first thoughts about the example besides, hey, it's working? I think it looks a little plain. How much effort do you think we're going to need to make this look Pretty. Again, I'm not a designer, but how much effort do you think we're actually going to need? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, that would invalidate the point of my presentation, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so I'll quit the um, simulator, and I'll go to one I prepared earlier because writing this one from scratch is annoying. Uh, where is it? There we go. There's mine. See, this is why it's confusing, because I didn't, I didn't bother to rename the actual project files. I really just cut and copy. <laughs> and I just put a little dash agency at the end, so I knew that folder was mine. Of course, if you've got two Xcodes open, and they're both at the top, say, audio input, you know how confusing that gets quickly? <laughs> yeah. Also, the fact that I've got 4.2 on my machine. So sometimes, accidentally, that one opens before 4.1.
and I realized, hey, I don't have the actual um, um, these things installed. OK, so what do I need to change? So yeah, I left the orientation as it was. I changed this line. I changed it from 60 to 15, because I didn't want it to draw as fast. And then basically, I changed the drawing code. So originally, it was a rectangle and a bunch of lines. I didn't like the rectangle. I got rid of the rectangle. Yeah, see, it's gone. But to draw a rectangle, that's how simple it is. Set color, set rectangle, done. So what I wanted was basically to have a series of lines, because currently it just has that one line that goes up and down and looks kind of plain. So I figured, OK, I'll have four lines. So my first line was red, and I made it in the middle. Second line was blue, sort of also in the middle, and then green, sort of outwards. And I thought, OK, with sound, what information do I have? So I sort of have the frequency. I actually know if it's the frequency, because I just looked at their code, and I just assumed it was a frequency, because it was making sort of up and down valleys and so on. Is that frequency? I guess, yeah. So yeah, basically, I, I changed the line to circles. So with a circle, you just do x, y, and radius. So in order to change it from a line, all I needed to do was put in a radius. For the radius, I just made it a, uh, well, yeah, I made it dependent on the frequency. And then when I was playing around with it this morning, I was thinking, OK, this is um, like it's, it's sort of jumping off the scale. So what I've done here, and yes, I've written a comment that I don't care that it's inefficient. I sort of said, tell me what the maximum number is, and let's just normalize our wave. And once our wave's normalized, it will hopefully look a lot better. And this sort of thing took all of, yeah, maybe 15 minutes. Half the time I was trying to remember what the functions in C were, like absolute. But so now if you whistle, who's that one that could whistle really well? Yeah. See? Wow. See, not much effort. Say 15 minutes or so. And you can take that example that you started off with and come up with some pretty visualization. And yeah, with, with this, I would advocate more. You know how they tell you, don't fiddle with things just to see how it works? I'm going to proclaim the opposite. Just fiddle, 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 and eventually come up with something. So Open Frameworks is good for, for building really small things. Obviously, that fiddle, fiddle, fiddle will drive you insane if you're in a company. They'll want to kill you. OK, so going back to the presentation. So I had a second demo. There's three demos. This is the second one. I had a second one. However, I uh, found out an issue. Originally, what I wanted, well, originally what I did have was I just had this. Um, if I just kill that. So I was just showing that, hey, you get the accelerometer for free. You don't have to even know how it works. So this is originally what I had. And I'm sure this is going to record well on the screencast. It's like, I'm holding an iPad now, and they're looking at balls moving. Yeah. I don't know if I should have had that recorded. Uh, <laughs> so the original idea was, I take this, and I broadcast over UDP the actual accelerometer values, pump that into the simulator, and basically show you this on the big screen. Unfortunately, I found out this morning, when I started doing this to the network, uh, the network sort of, well, the simulator didn't like the message that I was sending, and it, somehow I was causing a lot of signal aborts in a network stack, st stack somewhere. So I was thinking, maybe not, and I'll spend a bit more time on the third demo. So a lot of the effort went into the next one. 
Oops, I shouldn't have pressed escape. So this is the one where we become really interactive. And hey, we got half an hour, so we can be really slow and interactive. Um, OK, so I need everyone to get out their devices now. <coughs> Here's this. Because uh, you having these devices on will most likely see whether this is robust. Uh, and I want you all to go to the App Store. Right, yeah, it's not called Market. OK, yeah, App Store. And download TUIO Pad. It's free. Yeah. And it's, it's good that this one's free. Otherwise, I would have had to write one, which I had started to write one. And I was thinking, wait a sec. I'm sure somebody's done this before. Isn't that the whole Apple thing? Look on, you look on the App Store. Has someone done this before? Yeah. So um, I'll give everyone maybe like, like you know, a couple minutes just to make sure you find it. If anyone having an issue not being able to find it in the App Store, I don't know. Could, could happen. And uh, I'm going to ask something really polite, because because uh, it'll just mess with my mind if you do this. Um, once you've downloaded it, don't press start. <laughs> you know what I should have done? I should have just changed the port number and not tell you what it was. But just don't press start. <coughs> OK. Um, yeah, when you press start, don't. It'll look like this, just so you know. OK, so coding time. What can we do in, say, 10 to 15 minutes? So I'm thinking, hey, I don't want to build anything from scratch again. Let's look at one of their examples and heavily, heavily modify. So yeah, iPhone add-ons examples. Hey, OSC receiver example. I wonder what that stands for. Open sound control, yay. It gives me free UDP network without me having to know what, how to do any networking at all. Awesome. It really does. I mean, yeah. Is that part of the course too? Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, yeah. If anyone has done used Open Frameworks before, they changed it rather radically from 6 to 7, I found out. In 6, whenever you, you contribute an add-on, they had an extra header file, which just said, here's my stuff. In version 7, they went, we don't like this. Let's remove it. There's only one thing I don't like open frameworks. When they do things, they often don't tell you how to fix stuff that already used to work. That's my only KV with this thing. So yeah, you'll be in the forums because the wiki is not the best. OK. So let's. Touch that. <coughs> okay, you can all press start now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, I'll go back to the presentation just for a sec, just to make sure that's all set up. OK, so um, yeah, with the host, just press the, the detect button. And from all my testing, that worked. Uh, change the port to 12345. Uh, make sure that UDP is pressed. Uh, you'll find really quickly that if you press TCP or TCP, I don't know why there's two TCPs there, um, then you quickly realize that it doesn't work. Like this morning, I was like, how did I break it? I can't figure out how I broke this. And then I noticed I had accidentally pressed TCP. Uh, change your automatic to portrait, because I've hard coded portrait in. I don't think it would matter too much if you had it on landscape, but it's not exactly going to map properly. And then just press start. So is that all good? OK. Or was I too fast? No, it's too fast. Yeah. 
OK, so now that we've um, got it started, run, come on, turn, thing. Hooray, my phone was upside down. OK, now can you all stop pressing it? Somebody's lying. <laughs> OK, so it seems to work with many, de many devices. That's good. OK, so the example code for OSC receiver is basically just this. Uh, it's, it's originally built so you can take you know, more than one phone and, hey, you can talk to each other. I'm extract, abstracting it out because I realized that a presentation would be kind of boring if I'm just clicking one button with my mouse. It'd be a lot cooler if you can all press stuff. Isn't that cool? You press stuff and you can see messages. But uh, obviously, that, you know, it's supposed to be creative computing, not, um, not let's go back to the 80s computing. So that was original, and that's basically what it gives you. So when I was looking at those messages, a few things popped out to me. Every time I, you know, I move my finger, it gives me, it throws out a bunch of numbers. It throws out four numbers. Uh, I figured out the first two are just x and y scale down to 0 and 1. For the life of me, I'm not sure what the third and fourth number is, and I don't really care. Uh, and it also sends me your IP address, which is handy. So if I, if I close this, and now I open halfway, because it's not fun going you know, right to the end. OK. So um, maybe I won't clone the flower. I'll show you the halfway, and then I'll show you the full one. Simulator, yay. And uh, yeah, we've got that minute lag again, because I had to log in and out. So it's just compiling. Oh, maybe it's compiling really fast. That's very strange. How does that make sense? But OK. So uh, you all got your uh, phones ready? You all, all ready to try and break this program? Wow, this is glitchy. Oh, that oh yeah, that's right, yeah. Just thinking. Um, hey, what would be something cool to implement on the fly? I know. When I double click, all the points disappear. <laughs> <laughs> that would be smart. OK, so what is this? Yeah, point start clear. Double tap. Sure, stop. OK, because I just quickly realized that uh, how many people have got this thing running? Yeah, that, cre that creates a quick uh, swarm. Actually, I don't need to do this because you're, you're in the audience that can, that can put that in for me. OK. What? Jeez, I can barely keep up with the click. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is sort of the halfway point. And so where do you think I'm probably going with this? Yeah. So in order to do the halfway point, all I needed to do was in my header file, I put in a vector of points. It's basically just a list of points. And then most of this stuff is still the example. But what I changed was in the update function, I make a point. And then they've got a little uh, for loop here, which is the um, OSC messages over UDP. And I sort of just hey, get arguses, float. I rip that out, and I know that this thing is, uh, what is it, 0 to 320, 0 to 480. So I sort of just you know, forcefully fudged that in. And then, yeah, cool. Uh, I push it back. And then in the actual drawing loop, I go, set my color red. For all the points, let's start drawing. Pretty simple. That, Actually, 
you saw me build that on the fly. That didn't. Uh, that took me what? Uh, it was uh, yeah during our little tea break at uh, at eleven. That took ten minutes or less than ten minutes. Yeah. And the one I'll properly go through is the full one. I'll show you exactly what I've changed and where. And I'll put all this code online shortly when I get back to Sydney, because it would actually be good to you know, compare the original with the one that I've modified and see how little work you can do to get so many results. I'm sure school kids would love this. You know, year 12, major project, what'd you do? Visualizations, it took me like three months. In reality, it probably took you half a day or less. OK. So this is the final one. OK, yeah, this one doesn't have a double tap, but I thought ahead, at least for this one. Hey. Yeah, see, so you, you can all. Who's the one that has 10 fingers? Who's that? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's there's a limitation with um. T Why am I using the phone? I can use a, an iPad. Um, oh yeah, that that's something I didn't actually mention. That particular application that you're all running, that was built with Open Frameworks. That's why I picked that particular one. Um, however, it does have one issue. Put more than ten points, it auto crashes. Wow. See, when I built this, OK, everyone stop touching for a sec, and, you, and you'll see what happens to the screen. <laughs> Who's still touching it? See, it sort of disappears. So, so uh, what I did was, for every point, I gave it a lifetime. Uh, I guess when I was testing with two devices, it, it, it never really got flooded. Um, OK, so let's just change that. To what's more, pre maybe a 15. This is pretty arbitrary. <laughs> Run it, compile it, and well, we can all see if we can break it. Yeah, okay, so 15 probably wasn't the best, but... So yeah, you can see if you can figure out um, you know, which ones are your own. Okay, so 15 wasn't probably the best. That's probably because, let's see, I probably made the circle. So OF random. Okay, colors, but it's on your IP. Here's the circle thing. Circle, circle. X oh, okay, there we go. Um, if I'm dividing it by 20, whatever, 3. Okay. Because originally the lifetime was 100, I just changed it to 15. But I was sort of using the lifetime to have the little circles. That's why everything went small all of a sudden. So I either got this right and I put it at 3. If that's wrong, then I should bump it up to 100. Hey, okay, I got it right. Yeah, that seems nicer. See, so this sort of thing doesn't take long at all. You take an example, you play around with a few things. Half an hour later, you've actually got an actual working prototype up and running. So, you know, I took that example and I saw that it gave me a bunch of messages. First thing that actually popped into my mind was, oh crap, they're all strings. How do you? How do you grep in C++? I mean, it's really easy to do in Python and any scripting language, but how do you do it in C++? And then I realized, wait a sec. They've got a, they've got a method here that will just tell me if it's, a, if, if it's a float. So I use that uh, from the message. I basically just plot, plot it to the screen, and that's it. So yeah, um, I'll turn it back. Oh no, actually, I can probably leave it on the side. Whoa, but apparently you can't resize this so well. 
Is there a way to make this always stay the front? Yeah, I'm not sure. Ooh, it doesn't like that. There we go. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're going to be paying attention to me talking about code when there's this thing you know, on my right. Uh, so what did I need to do? Well, most of it was given to me. I, I'm, I'm looking for the first line that I changed. There we go. This is the first line I changed. I, when I get a point, add it in. Ah, but what I did change was In the actual header file, I had two maps. The first map was IP address to a list of points, and the second one was just IP address to a color. Uh, if you have more time, you know, put it in a class, I guess. So now, whenever I get a point, I uh, sort of similar to the halfway one, I just uh, remember it. I put a lifetime, and so I knew it gave me four numbers. So basically, I took the first two numbers. Once I knew I had more than two numbers, I just got out of the loop straight away, because the second two numbers always just happen to be zero. Uh, maybe it was the accelerometer or something. Two only the same thing. Yeah, that's actually probably an interesting direction for this. Uh, have little uh, pellet cubes things and come up and you know, try and get it with your finger and, you know, who in the audience wins, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's actually, I didn't think of that, that'd be cool. And that wouldn't be that much work, because, well, this took me less than, yeah, like half an hour. Uh, but that was because I was just fiddling. But I mean, I, I could see how you could throw this in with the sound. So, you know, I talk and the actual circles get larger, you know, relative to your fingers. And accelerometer. So, you know, if I, I shake the phone, hey, everything just, you know, you know, works like a virtual broom and just pushes everything to the side. So, yeah, I didn't need to change that much. Um, yeah, I basically just sent, okay, with the, you know, grab me the color relative to the IP address. Uh, wait, where did I actually get the IP address? That's, uh, get remote. Yeah, so get remote IP. That's how I got the IP address. When I wasn't sure, I sort of just threw things to, uh, you know, standard output. And then when I came to drawing, remember how we had all that ugly text before? <laughs> Put that in the comment. And I just drew my own. And I think the most complicated part, ironically, wasn't actually, was I, I put in the lifetime thing where you, know, you move your finger and it sort of trails behind and disappears. Uh, I forgot that um, C++, if you sort of pack things into other things, then if you refer to it, then it's going to copy by value. And if you modify a variable that's copied by value, well, it does nothing. Because uh, you know the value's thrown away, um, so that's why I think I. My comment is this is slightly convoluted, because you know I had to make this a pointer, just so I could remove that last point. Because yeah, 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 this particular line doesn't look confusing at all. Huh? Huh? Jason? <laughs> oh, chasing! I was like, what? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's um, well, also sorry, like 12:20, but um, yeah, that's pretty much you know, it, it gives you lots of things to do quickly, and you know, you don't really need to know C++. <laughs> oh, I covered it, didn't I? Oops. No. I oh, know I don't want to stop that because that'll kill that. Um, just want to. Go back one. So yeah, these are all the samples that they, whoa. These are all the samples that they give you. So uh, they give you a model loader for free. Uh, in the model loader, it has like an alien and a, and a chipmunk and so on. You can just move it around with your fingers. It gives you stuff for accelerometers, another model loader, and directory listings. Uh, well, multi-touch is now in the core. It gives you OpenCV. I wanted to do something with OpenCV, except I found that um, with version 007, it doesn't seem to want to play nice with Lion. 
otherwise, you know, I, I, I all would have had a camera facing you guys. Uh, uh, where is it? So the iPhone examples. So I sort of, I'll just run there what they call advanced graphics. So yes, this is going to die. But I'll turn it back on after this one. Hey, you didn't want to die. There we go. Okay. So I was compiling. Uh, does anyone have any general questions about open frameworks? Because my next slide is basically questions. Uh, that's an add-on that you can add in here for, yeah, for physics. Um, I don't know too much about Cocos 2D, um, but yeah. It's pretty much, uh, yeah, with processing, open frameworks for Cinder, my intention was not necessarily to become an expert in any of the actual libraries, but just to figure out what they can do and how can I do something really quickly. Like say I want a physics engine within a day, and then, yeah, basically, can I get a physics engine up and running in a day? Not necessarily knowing how a physics engine works, but you know, looking at the examples, hey, I've got a block and a pendulum. Hey, now, you know, bounces up and down and so on. Yeah, but no, I don't have any particular comments on Cocos 2D. Oh, that's right, there's a website I was supposed to show. Oh, that's right, the website died because I uh, logged out. Never mind about the website. So yeah, it's, uh, it's openframeworks.cc. Uh, when you go there, the main page that you really want to go to is either the wiki or the forum. Uh, I mean, the first page they present you is basically a YouTube video of things that they've made. You can click that, but well, yeah, you can you can see you know what you can potentially do. Yeah. Well, it's compiling 50 RCC. It doesn't take this long. How long does it normally take to compile Objective C sort of things? Yeah. Two seconds. So this is marginally longer. But yeah, does, uh, does anyone work with uh, in, uh, connecting more devices to each other? Because you don't just have to get phones to talk to each other. You can get uh, you can get you know depth sensor cameras talking to each other, or you can get projector-based versions, where they all just send out the same format. So the good thing about open frameworks is, yeah, it's pretty much hard to be independent, and they've run it on hundreds of different installations. So this is what they call by advanced graphics. Pretty, pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Oh, I don't know how I did that, but uh, so, so this is advanced, and I'm not actually mocking it. it just sounds like I am. But this is their definition. There is this is their definition of advanced. So th this framework is really meant to be simple to use. Going back to you got your setup runs once, you've got to draw an update, continuously running, and then you've got your listeners, and that's it. Uh, you can do advanced things, like, because currently what it's doing is it's just sort of having its view. Uh, you know, you can, you can put Objective-C views on top of this one and have real buttons and so on and keyboards. You can do whatever you want, because this is really just one view. Um, so I'll go back to the other application. Yeah. There are so many compiler warnings because I downloaded this about three or four days ago and I don't know how to get rid of them. <laughs> um, someone also mentioned that I should run Clang. Um, I'm not necessarily sure how to turn that on, if, if anyone knows. Because, yeah, the point of this was I wanted to see. I, I was giving a presentation on you can create things quickly in open frameworks. In order to do that, I needed to make sure could I myself build something quickly? Because if I spent like three days building this and like, yeah, you can do this in 10 minutes, guys, you're going to look at me and you know, never use this thing. But if I literally you know, could stay up all night and build it, then that's sort of like a proof of concept. 
Not to say that I stayed up all night and built it. Uh, and go on back to the presentation. Just realized this, this recording is going to be interesting. There's going to be a lot of, hey, it's nothing. And then, yeah, questions and thanks. So basically, yeah, the main thanks are to the people who built open frameworks. So Memo, Theo, Arturo. That actual application was built, I think, by Memo. Uh, some ITP blogger, uh, Robert. I was basically looking, what can I talk about open frameworks? Because a lot of it's pitched towards art installations and, you know, hey, wave your hands and, you know, we've got cameras looking at you and, you know, let's become skeletons. But it's like, can't really do this here. Uh, yeah. And, his blog just sort of said, hey, this is sort of some quick things you might want to do. That's the uh, you know, main link to Open Frameworks. Interestingly enough, somebody actually does have openframeworks.com and it doesn't really link to what you think it would want to link to. Um, and th there's also a link to my website. Uh, if anyone does go to that, it'll say coming soon because it actually is coming soon. Uh, but yeah, probably within a week or so, I'll actually upload this and upload the code and so on. And uh, some mentioned putting on GitHub, so I'll, yeah, I'll probably do that as well. Um, but I'll go back to, not simulator, I'll go back to build succeeded, run. So is anyone interested in perhaps using uh, open frameworks just to you know, play around and see what there is? Does it have access to the um, UI kit? Uh, or can you make it look like an iOS You, you could. Uh, so they've got three folders uh, with the particular uh, Open Frameworks iPhone distribution. They've got add-on examples, iPhone examples. Those, those two folders are basically direct ports just from the desktop. And then they've got iPhone-specific examples. And this is where basically they start mixing Objective-C with C++ and things just start not looking so pretty. But uh, yeah, no, then you can integrate with anything that Objective-C has. I, I, I was playing around the keyboard and thinking, yeah, it's kind of cool. But I was thinking, uh, I'll leave it to this thing, yeah. It's only three people. There could be more. Hey, it's not getting my, it's not registering. What did I do? Detect, EDP, portrait, on. Oh, there I am. Okay, I found you. Oh, oh, that's why this is crashing. That's why it wasn't working. So I was looking at it. I was like, "Where is it?" Oh, thing broke. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's what you can do with Open Frameworks. And pretty quick, and yeah, I guess the session's pretty much over because yeah, about two minutes to twelve thirty. But um, I'd also suggest when you get home, on a good solid internet connection where you don't have to pay per megabyte, download it. And just you know, double click on all of the examples and see what there is, because it just gives you so much stuff for free, and you know you, you can leverage it all over the place. I mean, I'm already thinking that, because at the beginning of the year I helped out with uh, the National Computer Science School, and we had them sort of programming robots using um, well, not Open Frameworks, but using one of the competitor ones. But now I'm thinking, maybe I we'll just use Open Frameworks. You know, after playing around with it for a day or few, it's not that much difficult. Who's that? <laughs> Smiley face. Oh, all right. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's just a good point. This can bring people together. <laughs> no, I didn't like it. Oh. No, I'll, um, I'll kill it, but I'll put it back on what it originally was, where it had the longer life cycle. Final life. So I had it on 100, and then I'm pretty sure I had the 3 at 20. 
So yeah, we've all got lunch now. But um, feel free to stick around and you know play around with this thing if you want. I'll have it up for maybe another two or three minutes. <laughs>